Let's go! Give me them toes! I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Football season starts tomorrow. Go Bears! Go Indians! Uh, section 3.8, Derivatives of Inverse Trigonometric Functions. Now, relating to the AP exam we have coming up, this topic 3.4, which is differentiating inverse trigonometric functions, all right, where we're going to recognize opportunities to apply derivative rules and simplify using differentiation. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and get after this bad boy. We kind of get to start this um, a pretty cool way. We're going to actually create these inverse derivatives, which is pretty darn neat if you ask me. I think I'm going to have to give myself a little bit more room. And we're going to use SOKOTOA, stuff you've been doing for quite some time, okay? The one thing I want you to remember about an inverse trig function like that is that an inverse trig means my answer is always going to be an angle. So if you go back to your pre-calc days, remember there's another way that you could rewrite this. It's kind, it's kind of the getaway would be like multiplying sine on both sides. So you kind of can write that as sine of y is equal to x. Okay, so it's like, hey, what's that angle? And uh, if we wanted to draw a picture that represented this, right, whenever we're dealing with sine, cosine, tangent, we're referring to a right triangle. So let's go ahead and draw that right triangle right here. Okay, and remember, y is my angle. So if I put the y right there, sine is so opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be x over 1. So my opposite would be x, and my hypotenuse would be 1. Well, I could do a little a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? And then I could find the missing side, which would be the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now, that's going to be important for what I'm trying to prove here. Okay, and I'm going to actually show you what the derivative is. It's kind of really cool how it's going to happen. And what I'm going to do is we just learned implicit differentiation. So let's go ahead and find the derivative of sine y equals x uh, with respect to x, okay? So this derivative of sine y, that kind of be a, a chain rule, right? We have the outside sine, we have the inside being y. And the derivative of sine is cosine. Don't you dare touch the inside. But then I'm going to take the derivative of that inside, which would be 1 dy dx. And I'm going to set that equal to, right class, the derivative of x, and the derivative of x is 1 dx over dx. Now let's go ahead and solve for dy dx. Whoa, 1 over cosine y. Well, that's pretty darn interesting because guess what? Let's, let's go ahead and put everything in terms of x. And the way I could put everything in terms of x is what's cosine y? Well, going back to algebra two days, put your little finger on y, right, on that angle. And cosine would be the adjacent divided by adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, which would be that. And do you know what's crazy? That's the derivative of inverse sine. Crazy and pretty cool if you really think about it. Okay, now I challenge you right now, hit that pause button, okay, and see if you can do, oh, my pen ran out, but I think I might have a solution. See you on the flip side. All right, let's see if I, if I fix this thing right here. I'm going to go booyah, and then let's go back to my pen, and let's see if it works. Oh, snap, I kind of got it back. All right, so I won't have to use that crazy pen anymore. Okay, hopefully you unpaused it and you actually took a shot at this. What would my shot be? Let's go tangent y is equal to x. Hmm, let's go ahead and do that right triangle bad boy there, right class? Uh, tangent y, let's put y right there. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, so opposite over the adjacent, and then we all know that's the square root of 1 minus x squared, right class? That's Now, I hope you really did try this on your own. Now let's go ahead and see if we can uh, take the derivative of this guy implicitly. Uh, tangent y, outside's tangent. Derivative of tangent is secant squared. Don't you dare touch the inside, but then you multiply it by the derivative of the inside, which would be 1 dy dx. Now the derivative of x is 1, or you could do the quotient rule, but why would you do that? Derivative of x is just 1, so let's go ahead and solve dy dx is equal to 1 over secant squared y. What the heck is that? We want it in terms of x, though, right? So let's go ahead and, well, I know that 1 over secant squared is cosine squared y, but that still has a y in it. Uh, so what the heck am I going to do there? Well, let's go back to my picture up there, right? Cosine squared y means you have two cosine y's, right? So let's, what's cosine y? Cosine y would be the adjacent, which is 1, divided by the hypotenuse, which is the square root of 1 minus x squared. Let's square all that stuff, and we get 1 over 1 minus x 
squared. Booyah. And guess what? That is the derivative of your inverse tangent. So cool. Now, I challenge you right now to get out a piece of paper, see if you can do inverse cosine. See if you can do inverse cotangent. See if you can do inverse secant. See if you can do inverse cosecant. And it's pretty cool. See if you can get that to work its way out. You never know if it will end up on a pop quiz or a pop test. All right, so let's go ahead and get all these good notes here. Uh, do you want to have these memorized? Yes, but you know what? What's cool now is with the exercise we just did, you could actually go ahead and create these all on your own, okay? But let's, here we go, inverse sine. Inverse sine, the derivative of inverse sine is 1 over, ooh, that pen stopped. Again, I might have to do a little magic. Okay, so here we are, inverse sine. Yes, my pen, pen ran out, if you didn't notice, is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now, guess what? Inverse cosine would just be putting a negative 1 over, okay? So make sure you put those in your notes, too. I'm just going to put these three major ones, and believe it or not, the, uh, the relationship between the, if it begins with a c, is going to have a negative. So inverse tangent we just did is 1 over 1 minus plus x squared. So inverse cotangent would be negative 1 over 1 plus x squared. And then secant is a little bit different. It's 1 over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. You just have to have these guys memorized, okay? And like I said, the inverse cosecant would be negative 1 over, okay? Now, the whole difference between this row, that's if it's just a plain old x inside, and this would be if we had a possible chain going on, okay? So each one of these would be just 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared. But then you have to chain it and take the derivative of u with respect to x, okay? And you'll know what these lo look like when we do some examples. That would be 1 over 1 plus u squared. But if u is more than a plain old x, we're going to have to go ahead and take the derivative of that inside. And then my last one would be 1 over the absolute value of u, square root of u squared minus 1. But once again, if it's more than a plain old x, we might have to do a little bit of chaining. All right, so here we go. And we get to practice some of these. Uh, take a stab. See if you can get them on your own, okay, class? Uh, let's go ahead and find the derivative of inverse sine of t squared. And I'm going to use those kind of formulas that we have up there and that you should have memorized. So f prime of t would be equal to Oh, snap, I do have an inside and an outside. So let's remember inverse sine is 1 over the square root, right, class, of 1 minus your u squared. And if you notice, I didn't touch that t squared, did I? So that means I have to follow it up with the derivative of t squared, which is 2t, right? And you can always clean these bad boys up. What would that be? 2t over the square root of 1 minus t to the fourth. Okay, and then make sure you can simplify these because they help out when we're dealing with some multiple choice uh, type questions. Okay, uh, inverse tangent. Ooh, and I have the square root of x minus 1. That's definitely more than a plain old x in there. So let's take the derivative of the outside, which would be that inverse tangent. Ooh, so I'm going to write a little dy dx for my notation this time. Okay, is equal to 1 over 1 plus the u squared, right, which would be this. Uh, but then I have to take the derivative of that inside, and that inside happens to be x minus 1 to the 1 half. So that's sweet. I get to do a power rule and a chain rule, right? So we got a little 1 half. Don't you dare touch that inside. But then you have to finish your power rule. But then I got to take the derivative of that. It chains again. And the derivative of x minus 1 is 1. Oh, is there some cleaning up I could do here? Snap. What would that Thing look like we'd have a fraction bar on the bottom we'd have one plus uh, if I square that I get x minus one could definitely clean some stuff up there right class and then it'd be a one half and then all that stuff is in the bottom whoa uh, look at those guys kind of cancel themselves out so it's like I have a one over and I'm running out of room here sorry class and I'm multiplying that x by that two so it'd be two x square root of x minus one that is a pretty final answer hopefully you're able to handle that all right here we go are you guys ready for one of the most difficult problems yet easiest problems in ap calc here we go okay uh graph the line y equals 4x plus 1 remember old school days that's my y intercept 1 2 3 4 over 1 or i could go 1 2 3 4 over 1 right you can go up 4 over to the right one or down four and to the left one. 
Okay, and that gives us a slope of 4. Oh, it says to graph the inverse. Let's, let's get crazy cool here and uh, use a different color. And remember, hopefully you remember inverses, that if 0, 1 is on the F graph, then on its inverse would be 1, 0. Just like what would that be? 1, 5, so it would be 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1. And then my last point I could use is this guy down here, and that would be that negative 1, negative 3, which would be negative 3, negative 1. And there we go. The blue one is my inverse, right, class? That would be F. That would be the inverse. Okay, in this case, my apologies, they use Y, so we use Y to the negative 1. What is the slope of the inverse? Well, if the slope of the uh, y is 4, then the slope of the inverse would be the reciprocal, which would be 1 over 4. If 2 comma 9 is on the original line, what does it correspond to on the inverse? Let's just flip-flop that bad boy. The slope of the line at 2 comma 9 on the original function is the reciprocal, right? It's a reciprocal slope of the slope of the inverse. The difference is that the slope of the inverse is calculated using the point 9 comma 2, okay, instead of 2 Comma nine. Well, what is all that stuff, right? You did that stuff in algebra. How am I going to relate this to calculus? Well, knowing information about the inverse allows us and helps us. Look at how that line is staying on there. Let's get rid of that. Okay? It helps us to figure out this bad boy. We're going to go all the way down to here, okay? Because on the AP exam, we're going to get a multiple choice question that asks us to find the inverse's derivative at a point. Okay, and we should, they do a little new notation thing up here, okay? That if they just put an A down there and get lazy, it's really saying X is equal to A, okay? But here is a very, very important formula that you better be familiar with. And believe it or not, the best way to be able to do these problems is let's just do some, okay? So here we go. All right. Here's my original function. Now, one way you could do these problems is you could actually find the inverse. If you go back to your Algebra 2, Algebra 1 days, remember that's where we swap the y's and the x's, and then we solve for y. It just gets a little crazy. Some of these actually are going to darn right be almost impossible to do it algebraically. So instead, we kind of have a cheat. Okay, so make sure you pay very, very close attention. Okay, the first thing that asks is to verify this. Well, one way I can verify that is I could plug a 0 in for x and a 1 in for y. And does it work out? And it show does, check, check, right? So I verified that that uh, 0 comma negative 1 is on there. Now I'm just going to teach you how to do these problems because like I just told you, they can be pretty darn tough. All right, here's notation. So what is the inverse's derivative? And I'm going to do this without actually finding the inverse, which is such a time saver. So we're going to take the uh, Inverse is derivative, and we're going to evaluate that at negative 1. Well, we have a cheat, and it is this. Believe it or not, it is equal to 1 over the original function, right? I'm not putting a negative 1 on there's derivative, at the other guy. Well, what is the other guy? Well, it says negative 1, and so what's the other guy? Well, there is negative 1. The other guy would be 0. So, And that's it. It is actually that okay. Seems kind of crazy, but it works out every single time. So how do I do it? Well, I come back over here and I have to find the derivative. Okay, and I'm sorry, I'm kind of all over the place here, which would be 5x to the fourth plus 2. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is, there's my derivative, right? And what does it say? Put a 0 in for x. I'm going to put a 0 in for x, and I get 2. So my answer is 1 half. And believe it or not, it is that okay. Now, this always causes a lot of trouble. So hit pause right now and see if you can do 6. But you're going to notice something about 6. Okay, let's actually take a look at it together. So maybe unpause real quick. Okay, take a look at this bad boy. Then you are going to pause it. Look, they tell me to do that. They tell me to do an inverse, but they only give me that. What are you going to do? Hit pause. See if you can think about it for a moment. And if you need some extra help, I'll allow you to use your calculator. But hopefully, a little mental math will help you to figure that out. All right. You tried it, so let's get after this bad boy. First thing we did remember is we verified. Right, class? We verified. Now, one important thing here going forward is, if you remember, when dealing with the inverse, this was a y value. Right, class? That was a y value on the original graph. Now, why was it a y value? It was a y value 
because remember, inverses flip-flop points with the original graph. So if AB is on F, BA is on the inverse. Okay, so what we need to do, and sometimes they don't let you use a calculator for that, right? This I could put Y1, that I could put Y2, and I could find the X value, right, of what, what makes that work out. Sometimes you got to use some mental math, and this one's not that bad. It should be kind of obvious that X would be 1, okay, right, class? And if X is 1, then all I have to do here is that's the point I am dealing with. This is on the original graph of F, which means on F inverse would be 2 comma 1. Flip them. All right. So let's go ahead and do this problem using that fancy formula I just gave you. Right. We could deal with the inverse, which we don't want to do. So we have this little cheat formula, which just means it's 1 over, 1 over, right? 1 over the original function's derivative, not at 2, but the other guy. We don't want you at 1. Okay. So how do I get the answer to this? Well, I've got to find the derivative, and the derivative is 3x squared plus 2. I take that 1, I plug that bad boy in there, and I get 3 plus 2, which is 5. And there we go. Class, that's really tough to do. I beg you I, to, to try those guys again. Try some of those worksheets uh, and see if you can handle that. Because that's a formula, if you know, right, that always ends up being on the AP exam. And when they do the statistics on that problem, only 10% of the students across the nation get it because it's such a hard concept for them to understand. We'll dive into it a little bit more in class, uh, work on those worksheets. You never know when you're going to have a pop quiz. Go Bears!